I'm Christoph Kronemann, uh, as a medical director of the Clearview Institute. I uh, would like to introduce to you a novel device that helps with the identification of the visual axis and uh, the centration of intraocular lenses, as well as the identification of astigmatism. This uh, novel ring keratoscope light is uh, made by Mastel Instruments. And as you can see in the associate video, it consists out of several rings of LED lights, which will help to identify the steep axis and the area of the steep axis. The rings are closer together, as you can see in this video. And as we undertake a procedure to correct the astigmatism, uh, the rings will straighten out and be equidistant to each other. As you can see here in this case, uh, opposing corneal incisions were used to correct the astigmatism, giving rings that are equidistant as well as little points of light that are equidistant to each other. This represents a complete correction of this person's astigmatism. In the center of the rings of light, there is a smaller red blinking light, which is a little harder to see, but will become more apparent in, uh, towards the end of the case. It's very easily identifiable through the operating room microscope. That light comes very close or is exactly on top of the patient's visual axis, which, as we know, is not necessarily at all consistent with the center of the pupil. It helps me to center the capsular axis on the visual axis as it ideally should be, for I do wish to center the lens ultimately on the visual axis. You can also see the two broader uh, reflections of light from the operating room microscope. Once the hydrodissection and delineation are done, in this case there was a partially mechanical hydrodelineation as introduced by Howard Gimbel some years ago, the fixation light is turned off for it can interfere with the visualization during the cataract procedure. The fixation light has greatly helped my surgeries to uh, identify the visual axis far more easily. It assists greatly in the centration of the uh, toric intraocular lens and it's been very uh, helpful to, to center the marker for the uh, toric lens where it should be by centering the 90 and 180 degree meridians on the visual axis. Once the lens is implanted, the fixation light is turned back on and we again instruct the patient to look at the fixation light once all the viscoelastic has been cleared out and the anterior chamber reasonably formed. As you can see here, all the LED light rings are equidistant and equally spaced apart and the red fixation light is uh, in the center of uh, the optical, central optical zone as it should be. When we use a limbal marking ring to measure the degrees and uh, identify the actual axis, rather than using markers that may smudge on the cornea and have broader marks, I identify the limbal blood vessels in that area and uh, use the limbal blood vessels to mark the axis at which I'm going to be placing the astigmatism-related incisions. Here we have the fixation light identifying the visual axis. The marker comes in. Now the 0 and 180 degree as well as 90 degree marks are centered upon the visual axis using the red fixation light. I very much prefer a marker that is of a larger diameter like this one shown here because it allows me very easily to identify the limbal vascular markings. As the limbal vascular markings are unique in nature and represent effectively a fingerprint, 
I will use some of these markings to identify the axis. So I do find the fixation light also very useful to help me center the capsule or axis, as you can see here. Uh, the other item that you incidentally see here is uh, an Oxler fixation instrument also made by Mastel that I very much like to use for it minimizes any corneal distortion while I do the rexus. As we can see how the lens is not centered on the visual axis, so it's not unreasonably close to the center of the pupil, but the two are just not the same thing. Uh, astigmatically, uh, things appear to be in good shape with the rings being uh, equidistant to each other, but clearly the, the central red fixation light is not anywhere near the center of the central optical zone. And if the f fixation is really off at times, you will need to use your preferably by manual I and A to really rotate the lens. Most of the time you can use your irrigation cannula to achieve that. The uh, fixation light helps me to really identify where it should be and aids my rotation and repositioning of the lens to achieve good centration. The alignment of a toric lens is essential to be placed upon the appropriate steep axis. At times it is talked about eyeballing the alignment of the toric lens. This is however not the appropriate way to conduct business. You can see here the fixation light and the rings are turned on. The uh, marker is used to denote the, identify the appropriate axis. Incidentally, you can see here the corneal refraction of the microscope lights as a second set of lights that one just ignores. But we need to bear in mind that there is a possibility of the lens ever so slightly shifting post-operatively, and we need to do our best to maintain it as best as possible exactly on axis. Hence, it is essential to uh, double check and triple check and verify that it is on axis. Having the fixation light as well as the rings helps to ensure that centration is on the visual axis and that the axis, both visual axis and the steep axis, are appropriately identified. This is another example of a toric lens. The patient fixates upon the uh, little light and uh, the marker is again centered upon the visual axis and used to identify the steep axis using the limbal vascular markings as a reference point. You can see nicely how the markings on the lens line up very well with the little red dot fixation light achieving and guaranteeing good centration and fixation in the appropriate axis for the lens. This shows nicely how the uh, axis markings on the lens are lined up both with the fixation light as well as the steep axis as shown on the marker. Again this shows very nicely how the markings on the lens line up with the red blinking fixation light and center the well on the steep axis as shown by the marker here. I once again emphasize the need to double and triple check to verify that the lens is as well positioned upon the steep axis as it can be achieved within a couple of degrees. In summary, there are a few things that I emphasize to optimize my outcomes. They do include an identification and a centration upon the visual axis. I do feel this is very essential. It also includes the 
repeat identification of the steep axis and rechecking the positioning of the lens and re-verifying things again. And it includes rechecking the relative relationship of the different rings to check on the appropriateness of the correction of the astigmatism. I've been using this device since October of 2011 and I've been most impressed with how effectively it has improved my ability to center the lenses upon the visual axis resulting in yet more accurate refractive outcomes. When we're using premium intraocular lenses it is essential to maintain the highest possible level of precision to achieve the best possible results. For if the results are imperfect, they will result in an unhappy patient, and the more unhappy the patient, the more negative the premium intraocular lens experience, which ultimately feeds back to all of our practices.